everyone, welcome. We are here at Silhouette Headquarters. That is in Linden, Utah. And we are so glad you're here. We're seeing people from Oklahoma, Indiana, Georgia, Naples, Italy. Good heavens, welcome. We're so happy that you're here. We're really, really excited to make this Dreamer t-shirt with you today that I'm wearing. We are doing two different methods with this. So we're gonna tie dye our shirt and then I'm gonna show you how to apply heat transfer vinyl to do your design. And this design is so cute. It is a free design in the design store until the end of the week. So you'll wanna download it while you can get it for free. It is so cute. It's a custom design made by Silhouettes Designers and it's so much fun. Um, and I'm so excited to do tie dye with you today. My sister and I um, blog at prettylifegirls.com. I don't even know if I said my name. My name is Liz. My sister is Sam. We blog at prettylifegirls.com. You can find us on Instagram and social media at prettylifegirls to see what we do. And we are big tie dye fans. We actually published a book earlier in the year on tie dye. I brought a copy. This is the book. It's called The DIY Guide to Tie Dye Style. And it has everything you need to know to get started on tie dye as well as 20 tie dye projects. And we love to combine heat transfer and tie dye because you get these layers of texture and it's so fun to do. So if you're not familiar with tie dye, I'm so excited to walk you through it. And we'd love if you grabbed our book, you can find it on Amazon. I have a couple of other projects that I brought here in front of me to show you um, that you can use this method for where you're tie dyeing your surface and then you're adding your heat transfer vinyl. The 90s are back people. It's very stressful to me. Someone I remember when my mom was lamenting that the things from her childhood were coming back and that they were popular and now that's happening for me. So I had like smiley faces on my get my kids when I was like in fifth grade and smiley faces are back. Everything from the nineties back. Tie dye is back. So if you're ready to embrace it, I'm ready to help you do it in a way that is cute that you like. So I'm so excited to get started. We're going to start with the tie dye, like I said, and then we'll move on to cutting with their silhouette machine. Before we get started, we're so excited to let you know that Silhouette is starting some premium classes that you can sign up for through Michaels. McKenna is going to put the link to sign that up in the chat. Premium classes do cost a little bit, but you are going to get content that you can't get anywhere else. And it's gonna be really a deep dive into using the Silhouette Studio software, doing advanced things that maybe you have been scared to do before, and you'll have experts walking you through those classes. So if you have ever had any questions that you just can't get answered or you are stuck on something there will also be smaller they will be smaller classes so you can talk in the cat the chat and engage and get your questions answered and become the silhouette expert that you always dreamed of so the chat the uh, mechanist put the class or is going to put the link in the chat so that you can sign up for those premium classes don't miss those Silhouette also does a class every Wednesday here. So make sure you are watching for those, signing up for those. It's gonna be so fun to do that into the holiday season. Okay, so let's talk about supplies first. So at Michaels, they have a great selection of cotton t-shirts, 100% cotton. So I am using that to get started. This is one of the Gildan 100% cotton white t-shirts. It is damp and I wring it out so that it's not dripping, but it is wet. This is a stylistic choice to start your tie-dye wet. So if you want your colors to blend more and look more organic, go wet. If you want them to be sharper and more distinct, go dry. So that is totally up to you. Um, what else I have is I have my tie-dye. So I am using a black, a purple, and a brown. And I like for this shirt to make them a little bit more pastel. So here's the hack I do. When you get these, these are tulip tie-dye bottles that you can get at Michael's in the kits there. I will, what happens is they come with the powder in the bottom. I mix them here for the magic of, of uh, doing a live. But there's usually powder in the bottom. What I'll do is I'll fill them up with water, shake them, and then I'll squeeze out half of the water. Then I'll fill up again with water and I'll squeeze it onto a paper towel until I get a shade that I'm happy with. When you're, when you're coming to mix your shades, remember that when your fabric is completely washed and dried, it'll lighten. But if you want something pastel, most, past, most tie dyes aren't gonna come in that shade. So you kind of have to add a little more water and play with the tones 
to get the colors that you want. So I did that with these bottles, just testing it, adding a little bit of water, squeezing a little out, adding more, squeezing it out until I liked the shades. So this will be more of like a grayish, a lighter purple, and a lighter brown. I also added a tiny bit of yellow to this one. If you look at my shirt that I have, there is some um, spots of yellow. You can see the grays and the purplies mixing together. And I just like that, but you don't have to do that. So any color scheme that you want, if you want it to be more pastel, all you got to do is be careful while you water down your dyes and you'll get a little bit more of pastel. Like I said, once you wash and dry, um, your everything will lighten up more. So don't go so light that once it washes and dries, you, you can't see your colors that you want. Okay. Let me know if you have questions as we're going along with this tie dye can be kind of confusing if you're not used to doing it. So the next thing we're going to do is bind our shirts. So there's a lot of different ways you can bind with tie dye. The classic is the spiral. So that's what we're going to do today. You just need some rubber bands. Now, if you've got a kit, a tulip tie dye kit from Michaels, it will come with rubber bands. So you will have everything that you need to get started. They call it tulip one step, which is great because you don't need a fixative. You don't need to buy extra rubber bands or extra tools. It's all right there. My hack with getting the perfect spiral is to flip your shirt over and start the spiral from the back. And I don't know why this makes a tighter spiral in the front. If you know the science behind that, put that in the chat, but it works best. I don't know why. So all the spiral is, is starting in the center of your shirt and pinching your shirt and then just twisting it. And you just twist it all the way around and make your little bunch just like that. Then you're going to take your rubber bands and bind the shirt. So we're going to do it in sections so it kind of looks like a pizza. So one there, one there. Now, as you can see, I'm only wrapping it around one time. That's just because I want my dye to spread a little bit. If you want really distinct whites between your designs, wrap it around twice, bind it tighter so that it's harder for the dye to get into the different crevices. So I'm just going to keep putting my rubber bands on. The best attitude to have when you're working with tie dye is to embrace the uncontrollable. So I have this shirt that I made, but when I make it again, it'll never be the same thing twice. So embracing whatever comes is the best thing to do. When you're choosing colors, like I said, I chose a gray, a brown, and a black because I wanted it to be more of a muted, um, shirt. But if you are worried about your colors, you don't like that color scheme, you want to do something else, here's my tips for picking good colors for tie-dye. The first is to think about the color wheel. So all warm colors, reds, orange, yellows will blend beautifully. All cool colors will blend beautifully. So like purples, blues, greens will look lovely. If you do something like a purple and a yellow, you're going to get more muddled browns. So if you want to stay away from muddling and you're scared about the outcome, Pick whether you like warm colors or cool colors and stick to those and you'll love all the results. The other tip I have for that is to use um, primary colors. So just like we learned in school, the way that those blend, they're meant to make other colors. So if you stick with red, yellow, and blue, you're going to get purples, you're going to get greens, you're going to get oranges, and you'll have great results with that too. So if you're choosing a different color scheme, that's a great way to start. Think about the color wheel, think about your primary colors. Okay. Let me show you my setup when I die. So I have this container and I like to put a cooling rack in my container. The reason I do this is because I don't want my projects to sit and die because that can create muddling too. So especially if you're trying to do something like we are where we're trying to create a distinct spiral on our design, it's best if it's not sitting in the die underneath. So I'll put my, I put my rack on top of my container, I put my project on top of that, and then my die will drip down and it won't sit in the die. Okay, I'm gonna put on my gloves now. At home, I typically don't wear gloves and the beds of my fingernails at the moment are black <laughs> because of that, because I'm just kind of a lazy crafter. Have any of you guys tie-dyed this summer? I feel like this summer was such a big tie-dye 
year? What did you make if you made something? Okay, so remember our shirt is damp. We twisted it into a spiral and we bound it in the spiral method. And because we have these distinct little sections, I am going to apply the dye there. So I already had mixed up my dye, like I said, got it to the shades that I'm happy with. I'm gonna give them another little shake. And all I'm gonna do is work in sections applying my dye. So I'm gonna start with purple, and I'm gonna skip two sections for the other colors. I'm going to apply it. You can kind of squish your dye in a little bit to make sure it gets through there, especially if you bound it really tight. I'm gonna do my brown. Everybody thinks of tie-dye as a summer craft, but I like to play around with more muted colors so that you can wear it all year long. I love tie-dyeing sweatshirts and then adding HTV to them. And if you go to stores, you'll see lots of graphic tie-dye. And if you have a silhouette machine, you can make that at home. So I flipped it over. I'm going to work in the same sections, putting the same colors in on the other side. You can see that my dye is dripping down into the container and that's keeping it away from my shirt so that we keep those distinct colors after setting it and everything. You guys have any questions? Let me know if I'm going too fast or if you have questions about applying tie-dye. Okay, that's it. So the next step is setting. And what you do with setting is dependent upon your dye brand. Since we are using tulip tie-dye, usually it needs to set for about eight hours minimum. So what I do, you can wrap it in plastic wrap or I'll put it in a Ziploc bag, just like this. The, the reason you do that is because you want to keep it moist. So here's what it looks like all dyed. You want to keep your project moist. So I'm putting it in my bag and zipping it up. Then I'm gonna let it sit for eight hours. Um, a hack you can do if you don't have any uh, metals or rivets or anything on your um, tie dye, you can put this bag in the microwave for two minutes. Now you'll wanna watch it the whole time because all microwaves have different power settings. So you can put it in the microwave for two minutes and that will heat set it for you if you don't have like a lot of time or you're impatient like I am. So as long as there's no metals and you're watching it with a close eye to make sure your plastic isn't melting, you can pop this in the microwave for two minutes, then take it out, let it sit in that steam for about another minute. Then you'll take it out. So since I can't do this for you now, I'm gonna just explain what would happen next. You would, once you had set it by either letting it sit in this bag for eight hours or putting it in your microwave, microwave for two minutes, take it out, rinse your uh, shirt in your sink until the water runs completely clear, then cut off your rubber bands and then put it in your washing machine alone and let it wash itself through the normal cycle, wash and dry it completely alone, and then you'll be ready for the next step. So I'll repeat it one more time. So setting is according to your packet direct, package directions, but with tulip tie dye, it's in plastic for eight hours or put it in the microwave for two minutes, watching it and making sure the plastic doesn't melt. Then rinse it in your sink until the water runs clear, then unbind it, put it in your washer alone, let it wash, let it dry, and then we'll be ready for the next step, which is going to be adding heat transfer to it. So, absolutely, let's hear them. No, doesn't smell at all. Okay. Yep, you can't, it has no scent. Okay. And then, Cynthia also asked, how long can you keep the color dyed in the individual box? 
So Tulip says not to do it for longer than 48 hours. So that is, once you've mixed it, they say 48 hours for best results. Me, I'm not a Tulip spokesperson, I'm just a crafter. I have put bottles, so they have some big bottles that you can use for like a tie-dye party. And I've filled those up and done them for projects, then put them away in my closet, then pull them back out and they work great after like a couple weeks even. So tulips, tulips, Tulip officially says, once you put water in it, use them within 48 hours for best results. I say as a layman, you can hold them for a long time. I think those have been in those bottles since I made the, the tester shirt, which was a couple weeks ago and it's working great. So any other questions? Um, I usually will rinse in cold just because it's really hot when I pull it out of the bag, but it really doesn't matter. You can rinse, just rinse and be working it through so that the water runs clear. Okay, great questions. Let me know if you have any more. So through the magic of live, here is what your shirt will look like. You can see that spiral, you can see your colors, the browns, the purples, and the blacks. Now, something I like about tulip tie-dye is it's not really, really a true black. You get almost like a navy tone to it, which I really like. Um, so what we'll do next is we're gonna switch over and we're gonna start on our design that we're going to put on our shirt. Now, on my shirt, I just put the dreamer, but there's also a cute decal that happens that's underneath it that's part of the design. We're gonna do the whole design today on our shirt. So you'll need a white heat heat white silhouette heat transfer vinyl. And I am going to come over here and share my screen so you can see what I'm doing. Does that work? Great. Okay, so here I am in Silhouette Studio, and I'm gonna go to my library. Oh, nope, to the store. Okay, and you can put in your search bar, Dreamer, and that's gonna pull up your Dreamer design. So you'll just click on it, and then since I already have it, it says download, but I think it, the, what it would actually say is add to your cart, and it's free until the end of the week. So you'll put it in your cart, add it to your studio. So cute. Then you'll go back into Silhouette Studio and you'll go to, from your store, whoops, sorry. You'll go to the library, which I'm in right now. And then if you have a lot of designs like me, you can tap, type Dreamer in again. And there it is. And you're just gonna double click and it's gonna show up on your screen, okay? Then what you're going to do is size it to what you like. I'm gonna move mine down to about eight inches wide. So I'm watching those numbers at the bottom until it's about eight inches. Okay. And then I'm going to just move it up to um, save vinyl. Okay. Since this is a shirt that's gonna go on HTV vinyl, something that I have <laughs> always problems with reminding myself, which studio now reminds you to flip it. But when I first started, working with a silhouette, it didn't have that. And I'm so thankful for it. Have you guys noticed that, that it says, are you sure you wanna print it how it is or cut it how it is? Do you wanna flip it? Which I really appreciate that. So to do that, you go to mirror and flip horizontally. Okay, next thing we're going to do is go on over to send. I have my settings adjusted, but I'm gonna show you the test cut feature just so that you if you haven't used it before. So the test cut is a dream because every vinyl is weighted just a little bit differently or all the different materials that you can cut with your silhouette, they vary so much. So I have my settings set up and you'll, you'll set them to according to your um, heat transfer vinyl or whatever um, surface you're going to cut. Then you'll load your um, vinyl into your machine And then you're going to come down here to, whoops, to test. And it's go, if you haven't done this before, it will cut a little tiny marking on your vinyl. Here, I'll stop sharing my screen so I can show you this part. Okay, it's gonna do a little marking on your vinyl 
to make sure that your cut will work when you do your bigger project. And that's going to save you so much vinyl. Because if you go ahead and try to cut it and it only cuts part way through, you'll be very frustrated. That is a beautiful cut. So now we can feel confident in cutting our design. So I'm going to go back to sharing my screen with you. Okay. All right, so. <laughs> okay. All right, I'm going to hit send. And there is that beautiful reminder. So if you have, if you are cutting HDV and you forgot to mirror it, you can change it there, but we already did. So we don't need to do that. I'm going to hit send. And now I'll switch back over to, so you can see it cutting. I think probably one of the most stressful parts about teaching these classes is cutting live because even though I have used my machines forever, I, it seems like I just get so excited for the finished product that I always forget some little adjustment and then I am in trouble. So I hope that I did it because I get so excited to just hurry up and get that vinyl cut so I can make my projects. It's just so fun. So cute. What have you guys made? What have you guys made lately with heat transfer vinyl? Has anybody started fall projects? I saw a really cute fall pillow that someone made with their cameo yesterday. And also here in the studio, there's a wreath that has heat transfer vinyl that I'm sure they're gonna be sharing soon that I wanna steal and take home with me. Okay, so. We're all cut. Where on this beautiful wall is a weeding hook? Oh, my magic hands are gonna give it to me. Thank you so much. Okay, I am going to cut down around my design to save the bottom of this vinyl. Just gonna slice across. Okay, now we're just going to weed our vinyl. <laughs> don't worry about the machine results thank you so much have you guys had any silhouette fails it's typically user error on my end because my i love my machines and it's typically like i said just ang anxious to get the project going you know okay so i'm gonna pull back nice and slow oh it's so satisfying don't you think I love to weed, especially when I have a good cut. Hello from Chile. Wow, Chile, is that how you say it? Wow, what are we making in Chile today? I would love to hear about that. Has anybody started thinking about um, Halloween costumes? My daughter wants to be a puppy, and so I'm planning to just cut out spots with my cameo and um and iron them onto a sweatsuit or something which is funny because when I was a kid I wanted to be a cow one year and that was long before silhouette was a thing and my mom <laughs> bless her heart she just cut out paper spots and safety pinned them to me so kids today they don't know how good they have it with all of these cutting machines that can make their, their homemade Halloween costumes look store-bought. Because when I look at that, that picture of me with construction paper, paper clipped to me as a child, I just think my mom was really trying something, you know? So funny. Here's a question. This is, uh, sorry, my mind is bouncing around. I was thinking this in the car this morning. My car is such a mess and I'm not really a, like a super messy person but my car is so 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 messy so this is what I wanted to ask all you crafters because this is this is the place where we gather and we can tell our <laughs> tell our truth about being a crafter 
Do crafters have clean cars? Are creative people messier than non-creative people? I mean, everyone's creative, but like makers, do you think that we're messier than the general population? I think there's a quote that's like, what is it? It's like, creative minds are rarely tidy or something like that. Can you guys validate my messy car and let me know? Yes, I am messy. Okay, let me know if it's just me. Do you think that you're messier than most people? And because, oh, my car is clean, but my room is, is a, okay. So maybe it varies. Maybe you have your one place where it's chaos. Is that it? Everything else is in order, but there is a place where there's chaos. It's my car. It's a garbage can on wheels. I truly need help. Okay. Thank you so much for the validation. Exactly. Thank you. I love this so much. Thank you. Oh, okay. Back. My grandson, I want to make Godzilla scales on the shirt and sweats and use foam for the fins. That is good. I'm so cluttered. My whole life help. I need an assistant. Well, if you find a good assistant, Hannah, send them my way too. I could certainly use it. I mean, a hot mess if there ever was one. Okay. Here we go. We weeded, is this so cute? I love this design so much. And you can do it with the decal on the bottom or without, I have it without on the shirt I'm, I'm in. This one's gonna have the decal on it. It's just, couldn't be cuter. Do you guys love it? There's also other ones like this on the store that say other things. I can see one actually out of the corner of my eye that says never stop growing. And I actually saw that tutorial, was that a um, screen printing? Paint. They made it into a stencil. Did you guys see this on, on Instagram? They so that made this same cut that has never stopped growing into a stencil. And then they used paint to put it on a shirt. So there's so many different ways you can apply. I love to make stencils with my cameo. Okay, so all I'm gonna do now is lay it down here in the middle of my shirt. I really like the idea of this saying dreamer with the, the tie dye because I just, I just attribute tie-dye to kind of being a, a free spirit, right? And someone who maybe has dreams. So, well, I mean, we all have dreams, but do you know what I mean? I think they go really well together. How did you decide on eight inch? That is just my, my go-to for the shirt sizes that I typically do for myself or for my kids. I like to do that. Something that I will do um, to determine how big is I will take my cutting mat and put it up against my chest and count the squares and then do it that way. So you can, if you're trying to decide how big to do it and you're making it for someone else or for yourself, put your um, cutting mat up against the shirt or fabric that you're using, then count the inches and then put that in the machine. It's not very scientific. <laughs> I'm sorry about it. Okay, mine as well. In my room, there is a radio room, a craft room, an audio studio. Oh my goodness, you're doing it all. Wow. Well, I have no idea how you would ever keep that clean. So that's incredible. I don't have a machine for the transfer. Can I buy one from the store and transfer that? Um, oh, yes, 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 yes. Is that what you mean like a heat press? You don't have a heat press? At home, I use an iron. I don't have a heat press either. An iron works beautifully. Okay, so I've put this down on top of my design or on top of my shirt. I'm going to put it on this very fancy silhouette heat press that I don't have a lot of experience using because it's industrial but they've assured me I can do it. So here we go. So it's on there, then I'm covering it with a little towel. And then I'm gonna, wow, push this down. And I hold it, do I hold it? I push it hard, oh, did it, did it guys. I am a brand new user of Silhouette and I'm having problems just getting the machine to cut correctly. Okay, this is good. Okay, that's it, just lift it. Do I push hard? Up. Muscles, help. Ah, oh, wow, okay. <laughs> okay, let's get back to this question. I'm having problems getting it to cut correctly. I have watched a bunch of videos without being able to cut vinyl design. I am frustrated. Okay, this is great. So that can happen with any new tech tool that you are using so don't let yourself get frustrated that's the first step don't give up don't get frustrated something that you can do there's tons of resources online which you already said you've tried 
like I said, maybe you missed at the beginning, there are going to be premium classes taught at Silhouette. So if you've dreamed of having a Silhouette expert sit side by side with you, that might be a great place for you to start. If you've been watching videos online and it still isn't clicking, still isn't quite working, watch for those premium classes. McKenna put the link to them earlier in the class. Um, do you want to put it in again? She'll put it in again. So you can sign up for that. Those are going to be really small classes with an expert and you can ask them any question. You can be trying to cut and if you have problems, ask them then and they can help troubleshoot with you. Um, have you tried talking to Silhouette Customer Service? Because I have had calls and chats with Silhouette Customer Service that have saved me. So if you haven't done that, I totally recommend that because they are so helpful, they're so smart and they will walk you through it. Also, on our blog, prettylifegirls.com, we have an entire series of getting started videos with your silhouette and getting started projects. So you might wanna step back and try something really simil, simple with just an adhesive vinyl um, and try something with that or just construction paper and ease yourself in. You can also send me an email. I'd love to see if I can help you too. But I would first start with Silhouette Customer Service, sign up for those premium classes as you, if you can, and then you can head over to my blog, prettylifegirls.com, and we have tons of Silhouette recesses, resources for you as well. I hope that helps. Do you use, do you need a special printer for the vinyl transfer? I only have a, okay, so this isn't a vinyl transfer. This is just heat transfer vinyl that is cut out. When I do use um, the vinyl transfer, I just have like a normal uh, laser jet printer and I've never had problems with this. So if you're printing your design onto printable vinyl, I've never had a problem just using a basic home printer. Um, okay, anything else? Oh, the heat temp. Um, 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 315 degrees, it looks like. <laughs> like I said, at home, I just use a hot, dry iron. So if you don't have a heat press and you don't know what you would do with this massive thing in your house, I know there's smaller heat presses too, but an iron works great. I've always used an iron, always had success with it. Just make sure it's hot and dry and that you're checking in 30 second increments to make sure that it's not too hot or melting wrong or whatever. Uh, okay, each type of HTV has their own temp. Yes, that's right. And you can usually find that on, yes. So that's great. So if you're using different kinds, there's so many different kinds of heat transfer vinyl. We use Silhouette today. But if you've got some other kind, make sure you're checking the package directions to make sure because the, the different um, ways to iron that on will be different and the different temperatures will be different. Okay, good questions, guys. Okay, so moment of truth here. We're gonna peel back our backing. Nice and slow. We did it. Is that so cute? I love it. I love the contrast of the tie dye with that design. It's so cute. You can play with the different colors of your heat transfer vinyl too to match whatever tie dye that you're using. It's so fun. Okay. Let's see. What other questions do we have? Send them over. I'm going to show you a couple of these other projects that I brought today that are all similar um they're all similar methods to what we made today to kind of give you some inspiration for what else you can make so over here i have this sweatshirt this is ice dye so what ice dye is is you set everything up just like we did today where we have our container and we put our rack over it then we put our project on top of the rack instead of using white or wet liquid dye to dye it you are going to cover your project in ice and then shake your powder dye over the top. Then you let it completely drip down, and as it drips down, it blends together, and that's how you get all of these amazing colors. Can you believe this? So the colors I use make no sense for how I got this. I used orange, purple, pink, and black, and those are the colors that I got. Is that bizarre? So that's what I love about ice dye is you get these really organic colors, and this is really fun for fall, and then, just like we did today, I did a smiley face. Uh, this design is not, I don't remember if this is on the Silhouette store. Yes, I took this from another design, I think. Mm, I'll have to think about that. Okay, so, but I just put cut it out with my Cameo, ironed it on the same way, and it's such a fun contrast with the ice dye and the 
um, vinyl dye or the vinyl, um, the heat transfer vinyl, goodness. These are some other smiley face projects that we made just socks that are tie dyed. These ones are a layered vinyl project. So you do the yellow circle first, press it, then the black smiley face details and press those. And then this one doesn't have the yellow underneath. But if you have teenagers or um, young adults in your life, these, if, if you're like, those are ugly, your teenagers will love them. I promise you, they are wild. We did a, a craft fair um, a couple of weeks ago with tie dye socks like this and they sold more than anything else. So I don't know, guys, it's pretty popular. This is another layered one. This is on a tote, which I like if you're not really ready to wear tie dye, but you want some of it because it's stylish right now. This it's cool to care design is in the silhouette store. I think it's so cute. Um, and that reminded me as I'm talking about all these designs, the design today that's in the silhouette store, I'm going to tell you the exact number so you can write it down. Um, it is free until the end of the week. So you don't wanna wait, go and download it now. And if you're watching this on YouTube later, I'm sorry, it's probably not free anymore, but it's probably just a dollar or so. Um, the design number for that is uh, the design ID, 383333. So 383333 is your design ID number for that design. So if you missed that before earlier in the class, free till the end of the week, and if you're watching this later, that's okay. Just go, you wanna pay the money. <laughs> it's so cute. And none of the designs on Silhouette Store are expensive. They're priced beautifully. Okay, what other questions do we have about, oh, okay. My Zoom dropped off before the instruction of setting and cutting the graphic on Silhouette and I just now was able to get connected. Do you cut it out reverse image or regular? Yes. So anytime that you are going to apply an image on a shirt, you want to reverse it. And like I said before, if you missed this, the beautiful thing about the latest versions of Silhouette Studio is that it prompts you to make sure if you want it mirrored that you do it. That wasn't always the case. And I can't tell you how many times I forgot that step and ruined a sheet of vinyl that was now useless when I was going to iron it on something. But yes, You'll want to mirror, if you're putting it on clothes, mirror it. And luckily, if you forget, Studio is going to prompt you to do that. Okay, great question. What other questions? Okay, do all fabrics need to be 100% cotton? For tie-dye, there, there's a couple of different rules. So 100% cotton is the best for, the, for easy results. Um, it's not always the easiest to find outside of a t-shirt. So you can go down to as low uh, as 35% synthetic and then the rest a natural fiber and you'll still have success. If you go below 35%, um, then you'll want to um, get a dye that can dye synthetics. Um, but you can do a, a mix of a synthetic and a natural blend like cotton. Um, but you'll want to make sure that it's at least 65% cotton to get the best results. Um, like I said, there's lots of dyes for synthetics. So you don't have to use um, cotton all the time, but it's so accessible at Michael's, especially if you're doing t-shirts, they always have sales for those shirts there. So 100% cotton is great. You'll get great results, but you don't have to. Hopefully that helps. What is Silhouette? Is it a software program? And do you print the design on a regular? Oh, great question. We've got a true beginner. Okay. Silhouette is a cutting machine that cuts all different kinds of uh, materials. So it can cut um, ad adhesive vinyl, it can cut heat transfer vinyl, it can cut um, all different weights of papers, it can cut, now it can cut felt if you have the right blade and other fabrics. It can cut so many things. You can make stickers with it, you can make tattoos with it, you can cut, I mean, the mind reels. But what we did today is we used heat transfer vinyl, we cut it out with our silhouette machine, then we ironed it onto our shirts to create the transfer. So it's not a printer, it's a craft cutter, and it's amazing. So if you don't know about it, I'm so happy that you're here. This is very exciting for me. You can come over to our blog, prettylifegirls.com. We have an entire section of silhouette product projects that you can search through if you're thinking about getting a machine. We would love to answer questions you have about it and show you projects that you can make. It will change your life, especially with the holidays coming up. There's 
neighbor gifts and costumes coming and things for the holidays and all of them can be done with a silhouette or made better with a silhouette. You're just going to elevate everything that you make. Um, it depends on who you're buying. Oh, yes. Okay. Yes. Okay, cool. Yes. Always check if you're, if you're going to venture outside of using silhouette project products with your cameo or your silhouette cutters, make sure that you're reading the instructions and doing your test cuts to make sure that you have success with that. Um, let's see. Oh, do I buy sheets of vinyl to use in a regular printer to print transfer? Okay. If you're going to do um, a transfer from a printer onto vinyl, you will need printable vinyl. And you can get that from Silhouette. I've gotten the Silhouette printable vinyl on Amazon also. So if you're wanting to get it quickly, um, go, you can find it on Amazon. But yes, you will need a printable vinyl and you can print your design on there. Um, and then you can do the print to cut feature, which is amazing to put it back in and cut your details perfectly weed it, iron it on. If you haven't done print to cut before, that's something that is a little bit more advanced. So we have a couple of um, courses on our blog, prettylifegirls.com, and Silhouette definitely does in their Silhouette 101. So make sure that before you try doing print to cut, that you have figured out everything that you need to have set up to have success. because so it's just a little bit more advanced, but one of my favorite features on the Silhouette machine. Um, my blog, thank you for asking. It's prettylifegirls.com. You can also follow us on all of our social media channels. It's at Pretty Life Girls. Um, me and my sister blog there about all different kinds of things and a ton of silhouette projects and a ton of tie-dye. Um, how long in the Ziploc bag? Okay, so back to setting our tie-dye. I put my dyed projects in the Ziploc bags for at least eight hours, um, but that does depend on the dye brand. Typically, I use Tulip One Step, and that is eight hours. So. Um, check your bottle instructions to double check that, but by and large, most dyes are around the same thing. Something you'll want to check, which we didn't do today because we used one step tie dye, we didn't need to use a fixative. It's all in the bottles. If you step outside of tulip tie dye, you'll have to use a fixative. So make sure you're researching your brands. All of that we talk about in our book, The DIY Guide to Tie-Dye Style. So if you are new to tie-dyeing and you have questions about that, you can find this on Amazon. It has everything you need to know about fabrics, different kinds of dye, setting, um, different binding methods, and then 20 projects to try. And they're all beautiful projects. And they all pair great with Silhouette because you can add vinyl to them. The socks I just showed you are actually in this book. And then we added Silhouette vinyl to um, take them to the next level. So that is a super fun um, thing. These, these are the socks I was talking about. So we made, we dyed these for the book and then I added the vinyl after. Uh, oh yes, okay, and McKenna is adding links to the YouTube channel for Silhouette where you can find all different kinds of projects and all kinds of tips and tools to help you if you're looking for more advanced things like the print to cut feature. Okay, what else does anyone have? Oh, do I have a YouTube channel? I do have a YouTube channel also. My YouTube channel you can find under Pretty Life Girls if you search at YouTube. We post videos every week, um, all different kinds of craft projects, tons of silhouette projects, tons of tie-dye. Um, so yes, be sure you're following me there as well. Oh, she, oh, you're wonderful. And McKenna put our YouTube video link in there too. I do that with my sister and usually she's here with me, but she had a brand new baby a couple weeks ago. And so I'm going it alone right now, but you can find her all over our YouTube video. She is a wizard. She is usually the tech guru with Silhouette. There is nothing she can't do with a Silhouette machine and it is inspiring. <laughs> I have goals to become as good on my Silhouette machine as Sam is. Any other questions, you guys? I'd love to answer them. And like I said, if, oh, where to find out the furniture you have in the background. Okay, so this is from Create Space, right? Is that what it's called? Create Room. Create Room. This is from Create Room, incredible company, makes these things, these doors shut, and it looks like, like a chest of drawers. Amazing, Create Room. You can find them on Instagram. I don't have this in my house. I wish I did. I'm very jealous every time I come into the Silhouette Studio. <laughs> I want it really bad. Okay, any other questions? Okay, wonderful. Thank you guys so much for being here today. If we went too fast, if there's things you want repeated, this video is going to go on the Michaels YouTube channel in the next couple of days. So watch for it there. 
Like I said, make sure you're watching out for the exciting things happening at Silhouette. Classes every Wednesday here on Michael's channel. And then there are premium classes that are coming up that will help you um, take your Silhouette usage to the next level. So watch out for those. If you make this project or any others, make sure you are sharing them with us on social media. You can use the hashtag Make It With Michaels and hashtag Michaels Classes. You can tag at silhouette.inc, is that right? At silhouette.inc, at Michaels Stores, and at Pretty Life Girls. And we would love to see what you make. Thank you so much for being here and happy making you guys. Bye.